Hi, I'm Doug Smith. Welcome to the 4 October edition of Portsmouth This Week. Uh, we've got a special program today. Our special guests are Portsmouth State Senator Chrissy Adiano and State Representative Jay Edwards. Welcome, gentlemen. Really appreciate you coming in. Uh, you both are members of that nine-member toll commission known as the Special Leg Legislative Commission on Infrastructure Funding, established at the end of the last legislative session. And uh, it was established as a result of the state's decision to put a toll on the Sakana River Bridge. And while the toll now stands at 10 cents per trip, uh, we all know that this is simply a mechanism to keep a toll in place until the Rhode Island Turnpike and Bridge Authority uh, gets permission to raise it. An issue here is how we fund our road and bridge infrastructure here in Rhode Island. And you all had your first meeting last week, and I just wondered, uh, how, did it, how do you think it went? Well, I would, uh, if I, I could, I'd first I'd thank you very much for, for holding this. It's, it's great to be here, and it's, it's great to be here with Jay. We, we spent enough time together in the last uh, 18 <laughs> months doing this stuff that I think we're going to file a joint income tax th this year. Yeah. Um, but I, I think you know, the concept being that it's not just a regional problem anymore. You know, our constituents came out so clearly and did such a great job of being vocal and supporting us at the State House that the decision was made that you'd have a commission to address the whole problem. It's not about just, is there going to be a toll in the Sakonet? It's about how do you take care of RIPTA? How do you take care of the DOT? Whether or not the Turnpike and Bridge Authority can be changed, whether you know, and how are we going to fund roads, bridges, buses, all inclusive, not just regional? And it's really a statewide problem. I mean, one of the things that we reviewed last week was that there are so many um, deficient bri bridges throughout the state. Sixty-two percent of the deficient bridges are in Providence County. Exactly. Newport County only has five percent of them. In Bristol one. So you, you can, it's a it's a huge state problem. And it needs to be addressed globally as a state. Otherwise, we're, we're never going to get beyond it. I think everybody in Portsmouth will certainly agree with that. Uh, I, I note that we already have one major bridge toll to get onto the island, and the other two are not right now. One's 10, 10 cents a toll. Uh, it just does seem like it's, uh, nobody's thinking about equity here. As you say, Providence has the, most number of, the highest number of deficient bridges in the state. Why aren't they tolling something in Providence if they have to toll? But I think you guys are looking at the bigger picture, saying maybe we don't need to toll. Maybe there are other ways to come up with this funding. Is that kind of w what you're... Uh, agreed. I, I think uh, I, might, I would probably t put it even a little more forceful. Not maybe we don't need a toll. I think the numbers, when you look at the size of our budget and what's available, I think it's very reasonable to say there is no reason there has to be a toll. Uh, the toll was, I think, a very front, upfront quick knee jerk mm -hmm. how do you fund something and that was coming from yeah. the governor and a department that only can toll so what else were they going to say this was there but now we've backed off of that we've been able to push them back and say no, no give us the time to think about how it can be done well rather than a knee jerk toll that only hurts us economically yeah it seemed to me they did it because they could that's why and the state needs to, to really think outside the box. And they have states like Oregon and Virginia, which are going through the same problem that we have right now. They're fighting their tolls. There's, their state reps and senators are fighting their tolls uh, that are already in place or they want to put in place in a couple locations in both states. Rhode Island's not alone here. So we need to think outside the box and find sources of income that are predictable and sustainable for our entire infrastructure, not just a willy-nilly toll Let's just slap it on because it's, it's easy. It's the easy way out. We need to really do the hard work, and that's why I'm glad we have, you know, the Turnpike Bridge Authorities involved with us and the Rhode Island DOTs with us, as well as, you know, both, both houses in the, in the General Assembly. Now, th your first session that you held last week seemed to be mostly kind of an explanation of how it's done now. Is that, mm -hmm. is that a, a appropriate I mean, way to How it's done now, it? but also I felt one of the, the things that was encouraging to start was that we were able to pin down the size of the problem. One, one thing we've been dealing with over 18 months or two years now is, is not, you know, finding the answer. It was, well, isolating the question. Mm -hmm. How much do we really need? Where do we really stand so that this commission can address it directly? We don't want a moving target. We don't want, well, 400 million now or 600 million later or what are we doing? We now know the scope of the problem and I think Director Lewis was, was as he always has been, gets out there and gives you the numbers and and it, would you agree Jay, that i think the the 940 million dollar number 
over 10 years, I think is something now that we can focus on and say there's a goal that this commission's got to get to. Okay, so in that, now you're looking at potential revenue sources, I guess. Uh, will you be doing that in the next coming sessions, probably? We're, I'm going to be looking at, I know Chris and I have talked about this with uh, Lou De Palma, Senator Lou De Palma. We're going to be looking at um, not just revenue sources, but with sources that are already in place and taking those monies and dedicating them to what they should be. The DMV is a perfect example. There's what, $45, $50 million a year that goes to the DMV. There's no reason why that money shouldn't be dedicated to our roads and bridges. That's what people are paying for. When you go get your license, you're paying to use our roads. You, you register your car, you're paying to use our roads. That money should be dedicated to our infrastructure. Now, you think with, with those kind of funds, though, as we've spoken about before in this program, uh, th there's still some shortfalls, and how, how do you guys see making those up without well, tolls? Well, even, I, I would specifically make the point again, I really love emphasizing, as, as I think Senator De Palma d did very well at the, the first commission meeting, let's also isolate the time period. Mm -hmm. It's not a problem just for this year. We're not going to find a, a billion dollars this year. Right. Ten mm -hmm. years, and in fact, we can think on a scale of 20 years, keeping in mind that some of the things that we did in the last two years by no longer going out to bond on, on our maintenance, the debt service on our previous bonding in the next 10 years is going to taper down. So DOT is going to have more money coming back around because the debt service is going to go down. We're no longer borrowing and as that goes down. So in 10 years, it actually gets better as we go. So let's think about the next 10 years when we look at the problem. And, and realize it doesn't have to be all be solved this year. Yeah. But I also note that prices will go up over the next 10 years as well. So I hope it's uh, better than a wash. You know, I noticed, uh, I, I noticed when I was look, going online uh, uh, to, to look at what you all are doing with this thing. Back in 2011, uh, Senator De Palma, as a matter of fact, chaired a special commission on sustainable transportation funding in Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. And they, they came up with a, with a lot of uh, recommendations which uh, apparently most of those were, were approved and, and are in use now. Uh, how does that study relate to what you're doing here? Well, I think it's, it's sort of kind of a groundwork for what we're doing, but I think we need to reach well beyond that because we need to find uh, basically $100 million a year in our budget. And if you take the DMV, you get yourself halfway there. So we need to find primarily about anywhere from 40 to $60 million a year outside of the DMV funds that we can dedicate towards our infrastructure so that the, DO, the D, um, Rhode Island DOT actually can go out and do some work and plan ahead. Yeah. And, and the only part of that commission study, I think, we, as we were talking about before, that didn't really come to fruition was a potential toll on Route 95. And, and I don't want anyone to think that, that we're sitting here saying there should be a toll on Route 95. But it, it's, th that was a specific question that I asked at the first commission meeting of the director, say, what's the status of this? What is, what's in his mind right now? And I think he very clearly answered that there are three states that had gotten permission of variance to toll their interstate. They have not done it. So what's going to happen in the next year is that Rhode Island potentially could still be in line for that. Doesn't mean it's a great idea. Not saying we have to push for that, yeah. but it's it's still something that is clearly in D, in the back of DOT's mind. Yeah, uh, I, I when I hear about that, I think of the New Hampshire toll that has got to make a lot of money. It's a bottleneck sometimes going up to New Hampshire, mm -hmm. but uh, it's got to generate a lot of money for the transportation uh, system of New Hampshire, I guess. And something like that might make sense. So, so it, that's not dead yet, is what you're saying. That's the possibility. I, I don't think it's anywhere near. Yeah, I don't think it's dead. Um, but I don't think it's a real clear shot either. Yeah. Yeah. Now the, the, the real question, of course, is on these funds like the DMV funds you're talking about. Where do they go now? They go to the general fund. Okay. And they're used for whatever. For whatever. Okay. Uh, so so I, I, guess the, I, I guess then the issue would become how do you replace the money that's going to the general fund? And that's a different question from what you guys are looking at. Yeah, we have to look at where we can get the money for the roads and infrastructure, and then we're going to probably have to supplant that money with something else. Yeah, the, the, the two classic, we'll call them silos, that we'll be dealing with, each has its, its plus and its minus. If you look at the silo of DMV money or old money, money that's already there coming in that we don't use specifically for bridges, the issue with that is 
Well, as soon as you take that for the bridge or, or the road funding or infrastructure funding, you are taking it from somewhere else. So that has an effect upon the budget. The issue, the other silo is new money, as we, as we sort of alluded to. Are you, are you reaching into the taxpayer's pocket again in another way, whether it's another fee, another charge, you know, the, the unacceptable tolling? That, that's, th those are the two silos that are probably going to have to be mixed a little bit. And one of the things that Senator De Palmer has been working on for a couple of years now is the whole uninsured motorist tax. Yeah. They want to increase the fine on that and drive people towards good behavior. And they would push more money towards the 2% surcharge on our taxes, and that money could then be get dedicated to our infrastructure. Okay, so that would be increased fines for, on it for drivers without insurance that yes. are driving without insurance? Correct. And all that money would be dedicated right back to our infrastructure. Now, is that actually, would that actually be a significant amount of money? Well, they think Are there a lot of people driving around with no insurance there? They think conservatively the numbers like 15% of the motorists are uninsured. So, so that could yeah. be significant then, yeah. And well, you really want to drive the people towards getting insurance. You don't sure. want to find them and just continue to find them. You want them to get the insurance and do the right thing. Now, the commission you're currently involved in, uh, it's, it's going to meet again, what, another week or so? Uh, October 16th, I believe is a tentative date is October 16th. Okay, and how many, do you have a, a finite number of sessions? I apparently you do because you have a deadline. We have a deadline of January 15th. January we have to come 15th, back. they report back, I guess. So everything's got to be done well before then so people can put it all together, I guess. Right. And then uh, uh, how many sessions do you think you'll have? Is it every two weeks or? I think we'll have four or five. I would agree, four or five. Okay. Yeah. So what do you see coming up in the next session, for example? The first one is more fact-finding. Here's what we've got. Here's, here's the possibilities, I guess. What do you see coming up in the next session? Well, there's two options, the way I understand it. One is we either have this one be the public input from all of our constituents in the area, and they were going to talk about the four-bridge system and primarily the Sakonet. Or they were going to bring in um, NCLS, which is the National Conference of Legislatives, they were going to bring them in as expert witnesses and talk about what other states are using as best practices. Okay, now, you know, one of, one of the things that, that I think everybody in Portsmouth, at least that's been fighting the toll, has been talking about is the economic impact, not only on, on Aquidneck Island, but the whole East Bay region. Do you think there's been enough study of that? Or, or do you think a, a, some kind of major study is needed to, if people are really considering the tolls, you guys are looking in the opposite direction. To, to try to expand the uh, transportation funding to something much bigger. Uh, but it seems to me that it's, it's uh, somebody needs to do a major study here to, to show what the economic impact might be. I mean, the East Bay is a major economic driver for mm -hmm. the state of Rhode Island. I know people in Providence don't seem to understand that, but it's everybody's livelihood down here. They will when it dries up. Yeah. Exactly. And, 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 when and it then it'll be worse, too late. Yeah. yeah. And, and you made reference to, every, everyone makes reference to the tolling in New Hampshire because they seem to have hit this sweet spot with this toll where they have a relatively small amount of road that a lot of people pass through who are not generally their own residents who pay to get through because they have to. Right. That sweet spot it makes people look at it and say, wow, I sure wish we could do that here. And when you try and translate that to a completely different geography here, this is mostly residential traffic. It's mostly something that businesses could go around if they had to. Businesses could leave. It's, it's a completely different situation. And I think that's the short-sighted nature of the tolling, yeah. is that you betcha there'll be an economic input uh, or effect to this. And, and I don't even think, it, 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 the studying hasn't been adequate, but there's a part of me that says, you really can't measure it. I, I don't think you could even put in terms yeah. How would you call every business down in, in Island Park or, or every business along the shoreline? What impact is it going to have in Newport? What impact is it going to have at Newport Grand? What impact is it going to have yeah. at every business? No, it's very you know, complex. Yeah. But I think, and you know, I, I, I spoke, I was talking with my barber about this the other day, and he's, just, he's primarily concerned about him because he lives in Tiverton and works here in Portsmouth. And, uh, I said, well, you know, it's not just that, though. It's, it's got to do with everything that comes onto this island or goes off this island is going to cost more. Everything. There's, there's no way to get around it. Even if they gave Tiverton residents a free pass, prices are still going to go up. But I don't know. I, you can't, maybe you can't measure the exact amount. I, I, they haven't done a good study. They've actually done no study that I'm aware of. 
But when you talk about your barber, that's the kind of personal impact that this toll will have if it goes into effect. And it's going to affect everybody who uses that bridge. So your barber is not incorrect. He is thinking about him. And everyone who, is going to use, who uses that bridge is thinking about how it's going to affect them, their business, going to see their parents, sure. going to see their, their children, that, going to the commissary. You're going to have yeah. veterans from all around the area who go use the Newport Commissary. Not going to be able to do it for free. You, you, you will change patterns of behavior, how people, where people live. Imagine what this will do to real estate even. You know, people saying, well, I'm going to move here, but my in-laws live in Tiverton, so I'm not going to look in Portsmouth. It, it, it has subtle shadings on just every single industry that, that we deal with. Yeah, and I, I think everybody here on the island certainly is very aware of that. It just doesn't appear that all of our legislature is, is considering that at all. That just seems to be part of the inequity here. It's like, as you said, Jay, you know, out of the, I think the Newport Daily News said there were 364 bridges in the state that have maintenance problems, and, and less than 6%, 5% or something are in Newport County, 63 or 64% are in Providence. Mm -hmm. And yet they're trying to put a toll on our bridge. Okay. Whatever happened, why don't they put a toll on a Providence bridge? Take that brand new yeah. bridge that they floated in there well, or something, you know? I'm just. You know, toward, towards the end of session, uh, people remember there, there was a, a, a um, Senate Bill uh, 989 that Senator Palmer sponsored and the, the companion was sponsored by Representative Edwards. And part of the, the, what got people moving in this direction was, was their foresight to say, what if we potentially expand the number of pieces of infrastructure we're talking about? Because everyone imagines R Rhode Island Turnpike and Bridge. When you say that word, people see the Pell Bridge. They see the East Bay. They almost as though yeah. it's in a, an isolated, but it isn't. Yeah, anymore. they don't realize what and, bridges and, are. They're and, all over the place. Exactly, as I alluded to, and, and, and Director Lewis again did a great job of getting people to understand some of these bridges we're talking about, bridges are overpasses. Some of these are 50 feet long, but some of them are off ramps, exit ramps, sure. things that are very, very long. You, I mean, you wouldn't think of it as being a bridge, but for all intents and purposes, it requires the same maintenance and care that a bridge requires because it goes over a certain, another highway right. or it goes over where people live. And, and it's got the same stresses and everything correct. else. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so, to like we started talking about at the beginning, this is a state issue now. I think I don't think there's a, a representative or a senator now yeah. who, when this comes to discussion, can say, oh, there's none of this is in my district. I don't have to even pay attention to this. Oh, they, they'd better pay attention because I think, I think it's safe to say we're hitting every district. And the reps and senators from the East Bay have made it such an issue that our colleagues are well aware yeah. of this issue and how it could spread to them if they don't help us with this issue. Well, well, that's great. And you guys keep up doing that good work because we really need that up there. And I think it's great that it's being kind of spread to the whole state now and people are understanding. So really what we're talking about, you know, on the one hand, I want to say no tolls, et cetera. But what, what you guys are looking at is essentially, forget tolls for a second, just look at funding. And in addition to things like, you know, dedicating DMV funding, uh, gas tax, uh, funding, stuff like that. Are, are there other sources of funding that you guys might be looking at uh, well, potentially? The gas tax is, is a real problem because as your cars become more fuel efficient um, and you have more electric cars, your gas tax is actually going down. And we, we used to get like 4.8 million, now we're getting like 4.2 million a year per, per penny on, sure. on the gas tax. It's just not working. And as cars <clears> get more fuel efficient, as we have more electric cars come through, you're going to have less of a gas tax. So you have states like Oregon now that are, are using a pilot program for how many miles you drive. They put a GPS reader in your car and they can tell how many miles you drive on their roads, how many miles you drive in Oregon. And that's one way to look at it. And then so, they base some kind of tax on... Yeah, and you don't pay a gas tax. Oh. There's no gas tax. People so it's kind of like a this, use this tax then. Exactly. Almost, yeah. Interesting, but that would require everybody yeah. to have a GPS. Like a road toll. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Well, in, in fact, you're using public infrastructure, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's got to be paid for somehow. And there are people who use it a lot, and there are people who don't use it very much. I mean, you have people who park their car, and they go out for a Sunday drive, and that's the only time they use it. Or they go to Mass. That's the only time some people go out. And then you have people like us who are out all and about all over the place. Yeah. And may, this might be a good point, because I wanted to mention, build on that a bit, we should remind everyone that uh, you, you have the listing for the, the website, the link that allows everyone to download 
exactly what we received from materials uh, at our commission meeting so that everyone can, can follow along and see what we're seeing. Um, but the point I want to make, with it, which is in that, is, is uh, Representative hit it perfectly. I believe the number that Director Lewis pointed to was the actual gas tax revenue now is down 21, I believe it's 21 or 22 percent over the last four or five years. And that's, that's that whole situation of we're driving less, more efficient. So you might think, well, we still have the same tax in place. Why don't we get the same money? It's because things have changed. The gas tax <coughs> is variable. It's not static. You know, it might be interesting to, to make the gas tax a percent of the gas cost rather than a certain number. I think it's 33 cents a gallon right now. Yes. It would be interesting if it was like 10% or something of the, or, or whatever, of the, tax, of the actual cost of the gas. Because then it would keep, as gas prices go up, the tax would be going up. We, we, we still will but be faced. If gas prices go down, it would also yeah. decrease. Yeah. 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 And, and, when are uh, gas prices going down, no, please? No, and, and of course, you know, with the, with the um, move towards, and I don't know what the future of this is, but the move towards cars that run on, on electric charging, yeah. I, I mean, certainly that, as that moves and advances, again, the same problem exists. If our habits with gasoline change, there goes our funding base. Yeah. And you have cars, the, the electric yeah. cars are still using our infrastructure, yeah. and they're not paying anything towards yeah. it. Yeah. The, and the, the other tricky part, again, which I think everyone has an appreciation for, is the issue of border towns and gas prices. A and, we, you know, in the commission, in the, in the materials, you'll see the difference in gas prices between Rhode Island, from a tax standpoint yeah. only, Rhode Island and Mass., and then Mass and Connecticut, a much wider range, but as some of our constituents pointed out to us and we, we sort of asked questions about, there's so little population in the northern part of Connecticut that you don't see the border town issue. You're either in Massachusetts, most of the population in Connecticut is down on the coast. Whereas in Rhode Island, Tiverton to Fall River. Yeah. I mean, pick, pick your border town, westerly to into Connecticut. Yeah. Doing something to the gas tax that puts your own convenience store or gas station at a serious disadvantage right on the border is, yeah. is an economic hardship. And, th and that's the problem with trying to raise that, even a penny or, t or so, you know, it's just, uh, yeah. uh, you want to remain competitive. Yeah. And Jay, I just wanted to make sure I get the number right. The, was it, MF, correct, $4 million a year per penny raised per penny in gas raised. tax. That was the number yeah. that I had in my, so, you know, again, how much are you going to raise it and yeah. how long are you going to raise it and how often are you going to raise it? Again, it gets trickier. That's a, it's a tougher thing to make static. You know, how do you do something that you're looking at doing forever in a firm way of funding sure. if, if, if it's going to keep moving on you? Yeah. And you have 16 of our 39 cities and towns are border towns in Rhode Island. So it's very easy to jump yeah. across the border to Massachusetts. Well, we're such a small state. I mean, yeah. I could go to Connecticut very quickly, yeah. too. It's, you yeah. don't want to go to Connecticut. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Not to buy gas anyway, that's for sure. Uh, what, what are some other sources? I know at one point you were talking about the uh, state inspection fees, for example, increasing those or something, uh, what are they, every two years? Yeah, biannual. Biannual Great. inspections. Uh, uh, well, it, people may have already, I, I think where you have been getting some from phone calls and, and people realizing there have been some increases in, in uh, DMV fees that people are just now feeling, which are a part of what we discussed earlier, where we are no longer borrowing and sort of paving our roads today on the credit cards of our children. So there are some fees that already went into effect. So people, I think, are already feeling the effect of, wow, we're not borrowing, we're paying yeah. as we're going. So will more of that be a part of this? It's, it's possible. Yeah, I, I guess I'm one of the people that looks at this thing and says, you know, prices are rising everywhere. And so it's natural for prices to rise in government and infrastructure and things like that. And it's a question of trying to keep up, trying to balance, as you all are trying to do right now, the tax burden on, on residents, on population, with what the needs of the state yeah. are. But I, I do think that you, you guys are looking in the exact right direction, and I just hope, uh, you know, the ultimate thing well, will, will be powerful enough to make some changes. I don't see it as just a revenue issue. I think we also need to look at what the DOT is spending their money on. We need to go through with the Rhode Island Turnpike and Bridge Authority right. and see if really they're a viable entity. Because if we're not getting the full bang for our buck out of that, then there's no reason to have them. Yeah. So we, we, need, we need to look at the entire <coughs> picture and make sure we know we're not losing money through waste in DOT and make sure that we get as much as we possibly can out of the Turnpike right. and Bridge Authority. Yeah, because this issue has essentially it's got two, two things, two parts, an organizational part. Mm -hmm. 
And it's confusing to try to figure out who does what to whom when it comes to transportation in this state. Uh, I also note that uh, it was the old Sakana River Bridge, which was not that old, 1956, I think it was built. Yeah, it was a lot to, older than us. That was yeah. left, <laughs> left no. to deteriorate well, by it, one of the, you know, by the DOT, I guess. And, and the, you know, the, all the politicians throughout that whole period. I mean, it's, you just can't blame the DOT. No, I understand. This has been a statewide got, problem, yeah. and we as a state have really neglected our infrastructure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, if, I think going back to, you know, through the last 10 years of, of local uh, elected officials trying to keep tolls off the, the bridges, I think one common factor that's always been there, and, and I know we hear this from our constituents now as well, it's not just nimbyism. It's not just our constituents saying, oh, just don't toll here, do something else. No, I think everyone has made it very clear that we want the bigger solution. We want good funding. My son is nine. And at our current rate of bridge replacement, we would be building another Sakonet bridge before he got to be my age. Yeah. So that, that's... Something uh, wrong with uh, that. Yeah, yeah, something is wrong with that. So that there's a bigger priority here. I, I think as a state, this is as big an issue as we could have. And this is the primary function of government. What, what else are we doing as government if we're not maintaining our infrastructure the safety of our residents to be able to traverse the state and do the economy of the state. I, yeah, people it, can't go to work. Yeah. You know, we're not going to get their income taxes. We're not going to get their sales yeah. taxes. I mean, we as government have failed yeah. utterly. Yeah, we, we had a, a, not quite the same, but a, a similar uh, problem here in, in Portsmouth when uh, highway maintenance was deferred for two years. I mean, you know, that's like it's not done for two years because there's no money to do it. And right now we're trying to get back on track, and I think uh, our public works department seems to be right on top of that, trying to uh, go forward. But uh, I guess the key thing to ask you guys, and it sounds like it's a resounding yes, but uh, are you satisfied that East Bay interests are being met in this commission? Yeah, you guys are, are flame bearers here. For well, that. a third of the commission is made up for people just from the East Bay. You know, Senator Palma, Senator Odiano, and myself, yeah. we're all from the East Bay. Yeah. Yeah, well, I and, and I and I think that what that speaks to is, I think leadership, every person in the state, knows what a challenge this is. Th this is a tough problem. Other states are facing it. It's not going to have a simple or easy or, or just shot out answer. Yeah. And but I think that they were willing to say, okay, you all made your case that this toll is probably not a good idea. We don't know what the answer is. So here, you all look at it and tell us what you think is the solution. So we were the squeaky wheel. Yeah. And now the squeaky wheel is going to get the oil, but we have to come up with what the solution now is. Now the squeaky wheel has to go to work. That's the squeaky <laughs> wheel's got to get to work. Well, you guys keep working for us because uh, I'm, I'm happy with what you're doing. And I'm, uh, I, I assume you guys are optimistic about how we can wrestle with this bear. Well, I time. look at it this way. We didn't win with, against the tolls, but we didn't lose. Mm -hmm. We got the commission. The tolls have been put in abeyance pretty much. We have a 10-cent toll, but they've been put in abeyance until we, we come up with an, an, um, a solution here. So I think we're a, a lot further ahead now than we were a year ago. Okay, great. I'd like to thank you guys for both being on. We're just about out of time. Uh, I do want to remind people there are a couple things coming up on the 375th, just to throw that in, if I might. Uh, uh, Jim Garman's talk on the 10th of October, Thursday, at the library on uh, Gentleman Farms in Portsmouth. And the, the big one, I hope you guys will come to this, is the tasting in Portsmouth at the library. It's a great fundraiser for the library, but it's also one of the major social events here in Portsmouth. So I hope you guys will join us there. And thanks very much for being on the program, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for having awesome. us. Thanks a lot.